One now to our court debrief for the week. A man on trial this week in a capital murder case of two people back in 2016. Luis Antonio Arroyo is accused of attacking three people, killing two of them. On Tuesday, the police officer who responded to the call that January night testified to what he faced as he arrived at the home. Paul Venema has been in court all week. Here's a clip from his latest story. He answered a call for a disturbance. What he found when he arrived at this northwest side apartment was much more. As I look inside, I notice a, a female victim laying on the floor with what appeared to be a knife sticking out her chest. She would later be identified as 36-year-old Keita Harris. She'd also been shot in the forehead at point-blank range. She died a few hours later at the hospital. Further inside, Mark Ruff said he found the body of Rodney Spring in a bedroom. He'd been shot to death. In another room, he found Harris's mother, Tanlin Jackson. She'd been stabbed. Mm -hmm. Wow, very gruesome. Paul Venema joins us now for the debrief. So, as we said, I mean, just a grisly crime. Mm -hmm. All over a pack of cigarettes? Uh, that's what uh, the first witness to testify was the, the survivor of this whole thing. That's what she said. They'd, uh, she, she said that cigarettes were, were important to her, and, and it, it escalated from there. But, yeah, it was just, uh, like many other murders, just a nonsense case. Has he entered any sort of plea to this point, Paul? No, uh, but we're going to find out exactly uh, what he did tell police when he was arrested because uh, I, am, uh, I understand that coming up uh, first thing this morning, his statement to police. So maybe we'll get a little more insight into uh, that. Well, and we know that this is a death penalty mm. case, and the jury is going to have to decide it, and there's a specific way they have to come to that conclusion. Yeah, and that, that'll bring uh, another aspect of this whole case into light at that time. But yeah... Uh, in a capital murder case, uh, the jury decides punishment. And they have to, uh, if it's a death penalty case, which this is, the state seeking the death penalty, the jury has to answer two questions. Number one, is he a continuing threat to society? And number two, are there any mitigating circumstances that should prevent his execution? The qu answer to question number one is going to be interesting because if you'll recall, Arroyo has a history here in San Antonio. He was, in March, he was the ringleader of these uh, three people who escaped from the Bear County Jail. Oh, that's right. So yep. the jury has not been told about that. That's, that's held for the punishment phase of the trial. So uh, mo uh, most certainly prosecutors will point that out as they get a, a yes, a, attempt to get a yes answer to that first question. Is he a, a continuing threat? Yeah, while he, was, while he was in jail awaiting trial for a capital murder, he escaped from the jail. So that would suggest perhaps a yes answer to that question. Paul, let's talk a little bit more about what you expect to happen in court today. Well, he, uh, uh, when he was finally arrested, he was arrested at his girlfriend's apartment. He was holed up there for uh, just a little bit south of an hour. Uh, but when he was finally arrested, he came in and made a statement to police. It was recorded. They're going to play that for the, for the jury this morning. Remind us about the standoff. You said it was a brief one. I, ha I do kind of remember this. Yeah, he, he, uh, he finally uh, decided to hold up at his girlfriend's apartment. They, at the outset of the trial, they played the uh, uh, audio recording of his conversation with police there. And during that time, he, uh, which is kind of odd, he, he was so concerned, this fellow has just been accused of uh, 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 killing three people, he was concerned that he was going to get hurt. So he, he, during the standoff, he kept saying, you know, I don't want to come out, I'm afraid you're going to hurt me, uh, I'm going to take my life, I want to kill, I'm going to kill myself, because I'm afraid if I go out there, you guys are going to hurt me. But anyway, uh, uh, police negotiators eventually uh, convinced him to, to come out, he went downtown, made a statement to police, and we're going we're gonna to hear that uh, this morning. Many times victim's family or representative of the family appear in court. Have you seen any family, victim's family members there? Yeah, not as, not as witnesses, but they are uh, cold, uh, paying close attention to this trial. Of course, we, uh, the survivor of, of this whole thing uh, uh, was the first witness. So there, there, is, there is family there, and there's certainly a lot of interest uh, on, on their part. Now, we said it was all over a pack of cigarettes, mm -hmm. but there's some indication that this group of people were probably how shall I say, yeah. not about their wits yeah. at the time. Yeah, there's, there's not a gentle way to say it, but at the outset of the trial, the first witness, uh, uh, Miss Jackson, told the jury, she said, look, I'm going to be honest with you people. She said, we, we have a terrible coke habit. We, I don't know whether she said we still do it, but at the time she did. Mm -hmm. She said, we had a terrible coke habit. Uh, Arroyo had a, a terrible uh, a heroin addiction, and he was their provider of, of the cocaine. So uh, there was a lot of drugs mixed into this whole situation, which often is 
the case in, in situations like this. But the whole thing uh, was drug fueled, which, as you mentioned, a, an argument over a package of cigarettes. Certainly, there's not a lot of clear thinking going on. So, so it's it's easy to see where where judge uh, where drugs played a role in all this. Wants well, to be another busy day in court. We look forward to your coverage in our later newscast. Thank you. Thank you. We'll thank see you there. All right. Bye. Thank you.